Hi, everyone. Greetings. We're in the middle of the 18th century. The barbarities of the slave trade are not well known among the British public because people just looked away. Mm. That's the, the truth of it. In our sinfulness, we rationalize the worst of our behavior and hide our eyes from behavior that is uh, inconvenient truth and the truth that... Mm -hmm. We don't want to know the details. We don't want to know the details, especially when it affects our econ economic prosperity. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it was in England in the 1750s and 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. The barbarities weren't made known until Wilberforce and his colleagues got to work on making them known to the British Parliament and then to the people. Mm -hmm. Here we go into uh, Brady's description of those barbarities. The barbarities practiced on many slave ships were enough to chill one's blood. The annual register of 1762 carries this first-hand report. Quote, on Friday, the men slaves, being very sullen and unruly, having had no sustenance of any kind for 48 hours except a dram, we put one half of the strongest of them in irons. On Saturday and Sunday, all hands, night and day, could scarce keep the ship clear and were constantly under arms. On Monday morning, many of the slaves had got out of irons and were attempting to break up the gratings. And the seamen, not daring to go down the hold to clear our pumps, were obliged, for the preservation of our lives, to kill 50 of the ringleaders. It's impossible to describe the misery the poor slaves underwent, having had no fresh water for five days. Their dismal cries and shrieks and most frightful looks added a great deal to our misfortune. Four of them were found dead, and one drowned herself in the hold. Clarkson's diagram of a slave ship shows that the male Negroes in chains were packed almost as close together as rows of books on shelves. And incredible as it seems, a case was discovered as late as 1788 in which 34 female slaves were crammed for sleeping quarters into a hole in a ship measuring only 9 feet 4 inches in length, 4 feet 8 inches main breadth, and, a, and 2 feet 7 inches in height. I can't even believe that could happen. Uh, slave ship captains reckoned on a death toll in middle passage of at least 10%. The memoirs of Gilbert Wakefield record the case of a slave ship reduced to great scarcity of water. The captain caused the handcuffed blacks to be brought one by one out of the dungeon on the de onto the deck whence they were pitched overboard to the number of 130. Wakefield also recounts the conduct of a Liverpool captain who, finding a Negro mother fretting over her ailing infant, snatched the child from her arms, knocked its head against the side of the ship, and threw it into the sea. As for the number of Negroes transported from Africa during the 18th century, it is difficult to acquire accurate information, but the total certainly runs into millions, while tribal warfare, capture, transportation, suicide, acclimatization, and early discipline account for the death of perhaps equal numbers. Horace Walpole, writing in To Sir Horace Mann on February 25, 1750, says, quote, we, the British Senate, that that temple of liberty and bulwark of Protestant Christianity, have this fortnight been pondering methods to make more effectual that horrid traffic of selling Negroes. It has appeared to us that six and forty thousand of these wretches are sold every year to our plantations alone. End of quote. During the first quarter of the year preceding the outbreak of the American Revolutionary War, 136 Liverpool ships were engaged exclusively in the slave trade, and Baines, the historian of Liverpool, places their tonnage 
as about a twelfth part of that which entered the port, while many other ships, not ranked as slavers, conducted a partial business in human chattels. Indeed, so titanic became the proportions of this business that during the thirteen years beginning with 1783, it has been estimated that some 814,000 slaves were conveyed from Africa to the New World plantations. The majority were transported in British ships. Long before the days of Uncle Tom's Cabin, Britain, inspired by a mighty spiritual crusade, already had purged her slavery scroll throughout the empire and even United States slavery. Meantime was being subjected to poignant criticism from many quarters throughout America. But during the first half of the 18th century, both the slave trade and the institution of slavery prosecuted their foul work with comparative impunity. Traders, captains, and planters having practically the power of life and death over their human possessions. When the modern slave trade was started, it was actually urged that slaves would soon better their lot by being brought into contact with Christian teaching. But this was the sheerest hypocrisy. Most slaves received no religious instruction whatever. Few were baptized and almost none were permitted the privilege of marriage. Even as late as Foxwell Buxton's crusade, chains and manacles were not uncommon. A certain gentleman from, uh, oh boy, I can't say these things. Uh, Mauritius? Mauritius, yeah. Mauritius, for instance, once assured Buxton that the blacks were the happiest people in the whole world. And, apparent, and appealing to his wife said, Now, my dear, you saw Mr. T's slaves. Do tell Mr. Buxton how happy they looked. Well, yes, replied the good spouse. They were very happy, I'm sure. Only I used to think it so odd to see the black cooks chained to the fireplace. So I don't know if they're being ironic or what, but... That's awful. There are some good movies that depict this with some truth, and that one that won an Academy Award just a few years ago. Twelve. Twelve years of slave. Years of slave. And then we watched the um, Amis Amistad. What's Amistad, it Amistad, which is a Spielberg movie from the 1990s. Yeah. A M I S T A D. That is. Yeah. And. There's always Amazing Grace, which we publicized before, but I think every Christian mm -hmm. and every non-Christian should see that movie because it depicts the, the the world the way it was when Wilberforce was brought into the mm -hmm. into the abolition movement. There were people in it before he was, but he the mm -hmm. thing the difference was, of course, that those that were already in the movement had little public voice, but Wilberforce was a member of Parliament. Mm -hmm. So the movie Amazing Grace that was made oh. I guess about 16 or so years ago now. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a, a great acquisition for any Christian library. Yeah. Next time, actual slavery on English soil. Mm 